voters this year face a stark choice behind curtain number one, America's most notorious snake oil salesman. From the moment he descended the escalator at Trump Tower in 2015, Donald Trump sold himself to the American people and especially his base as a successful businessman who would hire, quote, only the best people. Not only did that carefully crafted image of Trump as some sort of business mogul collapse like a house of cards in the wake of Attorney General Tish James's uncovering of years of widespread financial fraud, but Trump has become the first president since Hubert, Herbert Hoover to leave office with fewer jobs in this country than when he entered office, not to mention many of his people, those so-called best people that Trump brought on, think that Donald Trump should never, ever, ever get close <coughs> to the White House again. Now, behind curtain number two, a serious public servant surrounded by other serious public servants and officials and experts who together bring decades and decades of experience to the table in managing what is, by practically every metric, an economy that is roaring. News today that the U.S. added 303,000 jobs, that's well ahead of expectations, and that the unemployment rate fell to 3.8 percent. That's nearly as low as it has been in half a century. It's yet another data point in what is a remarkable string of economic successes and wins. Even inflation, which soared in the wake of the COVID pandemic, is down from its 2022 highs. Because he is incapable of facing facts, especially in this area, Trump has been spinning a version of the economy over on Earth 2 that he calls a cesspool. He said that at a rally last month. But as CNBC points out, quote, the numbers paint a different picture, one more in line with Biden's narrative of economic dominance, American economic dominance, than Trump's apocalyptic warnings. The Biden presidential campaign touting the great jobs numbers today said this, quote, President Biden inherited the worst economy since the Great Depression from Donald Trump because Trump only cared about one job, his own. Even the folks over at Fox Business had to admit the economy is in pretty good shape. Because at the end of the day, as you know, we started off discussing, the economy is doing better than everybody expected. We were all thinking there was a recession late last year, 12 months ago, and then you got 3% GDP growth. And right now it looks like that's going to continue for a while. So where we start today with some of our favorite reporters and friends with me here at the table, NBC News senior business correspondent Christine Romans, plus host of the On Brand podcast, Donnie Deutsch is here, and the host of Politics Nation here on MSNBC and president of the National Action Network, the Reverend Al Sharpton's here. It's so nice to have you here. And, and we've, we've interconnected and, 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 and sort of known each other through very different roles. And I admitted to you in the makeup room that when I worked in Republican <laughs> politics, I had the job of spinning a not good economy at this sort of very moment in a political calendar in the context of a presidential campaign. And I want to understand from you, first, the facts, and, and two, the difference between what people think of Biden's economy yeah. and what, what the facts really say. So first, I mean, in any era, a report like this would be received in any office of the White House, you know, as we got an A report card today. You know, this is this is a great a great number in any era. Three hundred and three thousand net new jobs added in one month would be good. Three point eight percent unemployment. That is a good number and broad based uh, job gains. But there's something interesting happening here where there's two parallel tracks. One that is the story of a strong economy, resilient and actually getting better by the day, by the week, accelerating job creation in the beginning part of this year. And the other side where people say they don't feel it. And I think the big reason there is that inflation story, inflation scars run pretty deep. And the White House today did push out the uh, Council of Economic Advisors, a chart, I think, that really sort of shows the story. Inflation, prices were rising faster than wages for a long time, for a year or two. You can see it there. And only recently have wages been rising faster than inflation. And it might take more time for people to start to really feel that change, that switch there, and they might start feeling better about things later this year. But for now, mostly people say, well, my economy is fine, but everything's going in the wrong direction. I mean, yeah. this is a branding problem. It's a branding problem because you say to people, how are you doing? Are you doing better than you were four years ago? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing really well. How's the economy? The economy sucks. 
And, you know, just the facts, to get the facts out there, beyond the jobs and the wage, wage growth is happening, inflation is softening, manufacturing is up, consumer confidence is up, uh, the unemployment rate is at an all-time low, our GDP growth compared to the rest of the world, we were just talking about the rest yeah. of the world is falling apart, we're going up. So Stop it's working. not rational. I think what's happening is when you say to people, how's the economy, they take that as a, like, how are things? You know, I, I see all these illegal immigrants on the street. Uh, crime is up. I don't feel good. If you say this to me, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you feeling? I'm not feeling so well. And I think economy has become this weird substitute for just the ether out there because the numbers are the numbers. And the other thing is people say, I am doing better. So the messaging has to be not about the economy. It has to be about you. They have to take it to the voter. And I think, you know, you, you've done this your entire life. The simple question. Are you better off yeah. than you were four years ago? You have to just ask the voter, not make it about statistics of the economy. How are you doing? Yeah, but you know better than anybody that Trump's answering the question for his voters, and he's yeah. telling them the answer is no. Well, he's telling them about crime. Crime numbers are down, too. Crime numbers I, down. I mean, we, we yeah. could have started with the crime numbers. It's the same story. Crime is down. People are afraid to, to, to have a layover in an American city. Yeah, which is why I keep saying the only path for the Democrats... You, you, this is not a logical thing. You have to say, well, however you're feeling now, this is how dark it will get. I, I don't know where else to go. As a marketer, as an advertiser, you can't... You, 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 it's not registering. I talk to people. I talk to educated, affluent people, and I'll give them the facts, and I'll give them, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but Biden sucks. Well, what do you mean he sucks? He sucks. He's old. What do you mean? Yeah, he's old, so is Trump. I don't know. He just sucks. Like, there's no... There's this weird lack of... No, of of common sense, this is weird knock of of rational thinking, and Trump just plays on that. What take me through the places where where President Biden can legitimately take credit for the things that are really surging and soaring in the economy? So it's interesting. The Chips Act. They just put all this money into domestic manufacturing of semiconductors, and that was a bipartisan action, by the way. Democrats and Republicans agreed on that, and that's just getting underway. Um, I was just in Arizona at an Intel factory where there were going to be six thousand jobs created, and these are good union, hundred thousand dollar a year or more jobs. That's one area that they're trying to highlight. Uh, the White House keeps going back to the nickel and diming of the American public and how they agree with people that they feel like the system doesn't isn't fair to them, and so they've been going after junk fees and credit card late fees and some of these other things. And the jury's out about whether that's really resonating with people, but those are places consistently, really, for the past year, they've been trying to tell people, we feel feel your pain that you're feeling nickel and dime, and this is what we're doing. We're lowering insulin prices. We're And where's the Republican plan? Where's the Republican well, there plan? There isn't one. They don't right. do and that that's anymore. What they, that's what they keep trying to, uh, keep trying to focus on. Where do, where, I mean, you talk to business leaders, mm -hmm. you know, on and off TV. Where does the affinity for the Trump economy come from? It's so interesting because this time around, privately, what CEOs will tell you is they are bracing for uncertainty and chaos if there is a second, um, a second administration. But they... They, oh, say more. Well, but they, but the, the, by, by the same token, they're preparing for it, right? And they, just like last time, you know, they say the world did not fall apart with a, a Trump presidency. They're worried about tariffs. That's one thing that, that Donald Trump has said that he would like to do even more of in a second term. But I'll point out that uh, President Biden did not take off the Trump tariffs either. So, you know, that's still a, a, an area where I think... We'll have to see what, what the Trump economic plan is going to be, though. You know, when I do they think, though, that it's just as economic? I mean, do they see the reporting? I mean, they're not all brilliant people. Sorry, but a lot of them are smart. Do they understand that if Stephen Miller is a White House chief of staff and they invoke the Insurrection Act on the American people, that we would have political instability, which is a terrible, terrible way to grow an economy? I'll tell you what CEOs have been telling me. They've been they've been just lamenting that there's not a middle. There's not, that, mm -hmm. that both sides have moved so far. And the middle is good for American business. And they all, they all say that. The people, the middle and stability is good for American business. And that's what they lament is lacking the even CEO today. CEOs on this, Nicole, you know, I talked about this a few days ago, that if he takes over, just look at what happens, hungry, that you could be a CEO of a company and your daughter can tweet something negative about Trump and he can go after your company. I mean, this is, this is, do, they, do any of them have the dark possibility of what's looming 
of that free enterprise will not be free anymore? Do, I, 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 I mean, I don't think I'm clairvoyant. It's so obvious to me. Are, are they not getting it? I mean, they're not all they're not all of exactly the same mind and how they're looking at the future. They're also, everyone says to me, a lot can happen before November. I don't know what they think is going to happen before November, but a lot can happen before November. And for the right now, the companies are doing great. Yeah. Revenue is up. Earnings are fine. Even with these high interest rates, they are still making money. Record highs do in the stock give, market. Do they credit the current administration? Uh, you know, I think that presidents get too much credit and too much blame. I agree with that. Yeah. And honestly, they're looking at AI investments. They're looking at productivity gains. They're looking at a lot of other things that are happening. And remember, we're coming out of a COVID crouch. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to find out what is exactly normal yet. Mm -hmm. um, I also think that that COVID crouch may have, COVID may have stolen a lot of our optimism, which might be For one sure. of the reasons we're seeing uh, so many of these consumer sentiment polls. But so do they negative. give the Biden administration any credit at all? For and on chip side, they do. On some domestic manufacturing, COVID, they do. For yep. getting the vaccine out. I mean, the, the idea that Trump would have done what Biden was able to do, and I know it was a bumpy recovery from COVID, but... I will tell you that a lot of business leaders studiously avoid crediting or blaming either of these gentlemen with anything, yeah. because they don't know who the next president's going to be, to be honest. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.